And to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much. Cause Just when you think he couldn't possibly get any more unhinged before the election, Donald Trump said at a rally today, surrounded by bulletproof glass, that he wouldn't mind suffering another assassination attempt as long as the would-be assassin first shot the media. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we got a lot to talk about here. Donald Trump's threats and deranged rhetoric, particularly regarding uh, the media, mainstream media, critical media, is I think this has reached its absolute zenith. This is the worst we've ever seen it, and we're going to talk about it. It's not just that he's advocating for censorship and retribution against the media. He is now supporting explicitly, publicly, violence and death against them. I have a piece of glass over here. And I don't have a piece of glass there. <laughs> and I have this piece of glass here. But all we have really over here is the fake news, right? <laughs> and... To get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much. I don't mind. I don't mind that. I so that was Donald Trump expressing support, as long as he's surrounded by bulletproof glass, for another assassination attempt against him, as long as the assassin shoots through the media, shoots through the reporters, the fake news. And even more chilling, or perhaps as chilling as that comment, is the reaction it got from Trump supporters in attendance. They cheered and applauded. Donald Trump's most fervent cultish supporters are enthusiastic and bloodthirsty. They cheer at the notion of the media being gunned down in gun violence because they're that devoted to Donald Trump, and they think the media is his political opposition. folks. The fact that this man has a 50-50 chance of becoming president again, what an indictment that is on our country, our electorate, we the American people, that he stands a very good chance of becoming president again. History will discuss this. We will be the subject. This era will be the subject of so much critical history. Future generations will look down on us with contempt, and understandably so, that we let it get this close, this far. The derangement of Donald Trump with the media can't be overstated. Again, physical violence, he's already hinted at it repeatedly over the years, right? You know, talking about paying the legal bills, uh, you know, for a crowd supporter if they hit a reporter. Well, this is even worse because he's saying, hey, as long as I'm surrounded by bulletproof glass, you can take a shot at me. Just please shoot through the media to do it. Disgusting and disqualifying beyond words. Can you imagine if a Democratic politician said this? That would be the end of their career. Imagine if Joe Biden said something like that. Imagine. If Kamala Harris said something like that, the Trump and Republicans are graded on the most disgusting and stupid and despicable and irrational of curves. Besides the violence, though, Donald Trump is again publicly advocating for censoring and using the levers of power uh, in retribution against critical media. And by the way, this is actually being echoed by a top Trump supporter who supposedly joined Trump, dropped his own candidacy against Trump because, in part, he's said that Donald Trump better supported a free and liberal media, liberal being, you know, the actual First Amendment protections, not liberal versus conservative, but this idea that, you know, the state wouldn't regulate or try to censor or put its boot on the media. Let's play these clips of Donald Trump once again threatening the mainstream media in terms of censorship and the hypocrisy coming from RFK Jr. She said he canceled the show. He looks very tired. He looks very, very tired he, because I canceled a show, did another one. No, I cancel shows that are no good. NBC is no good, they're no good. ABC is no good. CBS is no good. And in fact, in honor of you, I just sued CBS today because of 60 Minutes. You know why I sued him? Because she was on and it was called Election Interference Fraud. Very simple. They so he sued CBS for $10 billion, $10 billion, because he believes that they are 
um, you know, engaging in election fraud. Again, absolutely despicable stuff. He says that they selectively edited in an unprecedented way Vice President Harris's answer to a question. Meanwhile, as was reported, Fox does this all the time for Trump, you know, editing for concision and for the sake of, you know, some sort of cohesive uh, segment that they edit, they remove certain things. Donald Trump has been the beneficiary of that on Fox News for years, but he doesn't care. That's not election interference, and he would certainly never support Vice President Harris suing Fox News for $10 billion. But the impulses are extraordinary. And again, it's not just Trump. You have RFK Jr., supposedly a principled liberal. I used to be part of the Democratic Party, and now the Democratic Party is too censorious and too authoritarian, and they're so keen on censoring the press. Well, this is what RFK Jr. has to say about all this now that he's supporting Donald Trump. He said, well, President Trump is saying radical things. I said, like what? He said he's going to pull, he said he's going to pull CBS's license. <laughs> and I said he ought to pull CBS's license. So RFK Jr. in front of a crowd of Trump supporters has totally abandoned the pretense of wanting a free press. He enthusiastically supports Donald Trump using the levers of state power to punish press that is critical of Donald Trump. If you criticize Donald Trump, if you are seen as too friendly, too supportive of Democrats, Donald Trump's political opposition, you should have your license revoked. Really? The authoritarianism within the MAGA Republican movement is without parallel, is unprecedented. But so many people like to create a false equivalence and say, well, both sides, both sides. No, there's nothing like this in the Democratic Party. Nothing. And certainly not at the top of the ticket. But so many people are willing to set principle aside for the sake of political expedience. And none, no movement embodies that more than the MAGA movement. And there have been great op-eds written about the threat Trump poses to the media based on things that he has said uh, jailed reporter silence networks what Trump says he'd do if the media to the media if elected. On the campaign trail and in interviews, Donald Trump has suggested that if he regains the White House, he will exact vengeance on news outlets that anger him. More specifically, Trump has pledged to toss reporters in jail and strip major television networks of their broadcast licenses as retribution for coverage he didn't like. Quote, it speaks directly to the First Amendment, and the First Amendment is a cornerstone of our democracy. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel, Rosenworcel, a Democrat, tells NPR. To be clear, the government does not license national networks like those targeted by Trump, but the FCC does license local TV and radio stations to use the public airwaves. Quote, while the FCC has the authority to provide licenses for TV and radio, it's pretty fundamental that we don't take them away because political candidates disagree with or dislike any kind of content or coverage, Rosen Worsell says. And again, this is important. Consider that so much of local TV and radio are owned by conservative-leaning uh, conglomerates and interests, like Sinclair, for example. President Biden and the Democrats are in power now. They haven't threatened or even attempted to revoke their licenses, even though no doubt they're getting coverage that they don't like. Again, this is total asymmetry. Democrats don't have the same sort of censorious, illiberal instinct the way that Trump does. He is unparalleled. Trump's declarations arrive at a time of increasing concern about his more autocratic impulses, and press advocates say he is intentionally fueling a, a climate hostile to independent reporting. One in three journalists say they face violence or the threat of it. Um, even so, a new survey of hundreds of journalists who, who receive safety training from the International Women's Media Foundation finds 36% say they have faced or been threatened with physical violence on the job, and they felt especially threatened at Trump campaign rallies. This is the environment that Donald Trump is deliberately creating. Again, I can't, we can't overstate this. We can't normalize it. I'm sorry to those out there who are uncomfortable with the fact that this is a relatively unambiguous political climate where there's clearly a villain and that there's clearly a hero. But we've actually encountered those things before. Like, listen, think of all, think of some of the most iconic moments in American or global history, right? Let's use World War II, right? There's a re one of the reasons that World War II is so, um, I should say this, front of mind for so many people when they think about conflict, why it's so researched and Googled and studied and scrutinized. It wasn't just because it was the biggest war in American history, but it actually lent itself well for the most part, for the most part, 
to our cinematic notions of narrative pop culture. There was a good guy and there was a bad guy. There was a good faction. There was a bad faction. And obviously, if you actually look at it, it's not quite true because the allies did some really terrible things. President Roosevelt, who, in my opinion, is one of the greatest presidents in American history, did some really shameful, disgusting things, including interring or interning, you know, 200,000 Japanese Americans uh, at the height of of the Second World War. They, he violated this, their civil liberties. It was racist. It was bigoted. It was gross. But no one would ever say that FDR and Hitler were the same, right? Or were equally bad. Nobody says that. It's the same thing with the American Civil War, right? The Confederacy was just objectively far worse than the Union, even though the Union wasn't perfect. And President Lincoln, considered by many Americans to be the greatest president in American history, he actually accrued a lot of executive power and violated the civil liberties of Americans. That's why some conservatives to this day really dislike Abraham Lincoln, also because they have Confederate sympathies, right? And he was the great enemy of the Confederacy. But no one would ever say or should ever say that Abraham Lincoln was as bad as Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, right? I mean, we sometimes in life, in political climates, there's just, it's not that complicated. And it's not. The Democratic Party is not perfect. Kamala Harris is not perfect. There are legitimate criticisms you can have. But when it comes to a lot of things, Donald Trump is just objectively orders of magnitude worse. And I understand that when we fixate on Trump, it makes a lot of, un- a lot of people uncomfortable. Well, what about the Democrats? Well, I'm sorry. If Donald Trump does things on the daily that are just objectively worse than things that Democrats do over the span of years, like basically it would take years for all the terrible things that Democrats do to add up to just one day for Donald Trump, that's on Donald Trump. And it's really stupid and dishonest and dangerous to pretend otherwise and create a false equivalent simply because some people are uncomfortable about the fact that Donald Trump is morally inferior to every elected Democrat. By far, none who come close. The most awful Democrat politician in this country like Bob Menendez is just a better person by far than Donald Trump. And if you don't like that, Go to Donald Trump and go to his supporters and say, hey, do better, because I just don't like that in this very complicated world, we have a good candidate and we have an evil candidate. But that's where we are. Donald Trump publicly advocating for the death of reporters, saying, go ahead, take a shot at me, but just shoot through reporters first. I wouldn't, I don't mind. That's really gross. And we've normalized it. So we still have a chance to defeat him at the ballot box. On November 5th, if you're an eligible voter, please make a plan to vote. If you're eligible but you're not registered, register to vote. A lot of states still permit same-day voter registration where you can go to the polling place, register to vote, and vote same day. And your vote could make a huge difference. And we need to put this behind us. Food for thought. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.